Good morning, everyone. Oh, what a good day it's going to be, isn't it? Oh, my goodness. Is it going to be a good day? Yeah, yeah it's going to be a great day, isn't it? A very warm welcome to you from Christchurch, Felix, still. Whether you're here in the building or you're watching online, it's really great to have you with us this morning, especially today when four of our young people for Natty and Josh, for Katie and Sersha, who are going to be getting a little bit wet later on as they're going to be baptized and reaffirmed in the waters of baptism later in our service. Notices, we always have notices in an Anglican church, so here they go. Little Fishy's Room is closed today, the Little Fishy's Room, where our crash aged children go. If you need to have them anywhere, then there's some areas out here where the couch is, but food is being served today, so we're using that for the food area at the present. APM, APCM, last Tuesday we had a gathering together of our annual parish church meeting and annual parochial church meeting. Yes, there were two. Um, many encouragements took place there, and we've got some people who've been elected as well to new roles. May I just say a big thank you to those who have served in the last period as well. It's been really important, great to have you with us. It's just been fantastic. And we pray for all those who are now taking on new responsibilities in the next period. Um, those people are Richard and Jason are going again as church wardens. Liz G as Deanery Synod, PCC's Barbara G, Wendy R, Chris M, Tracy W, and core ministry team, Andrew C and D Balshaw. So let us pray for those who lead our church in various roles and give thanks especially to those who have stepped down this year, which is Andrew and Christos. Thank you very much for all you've been doing. Youth Alpha course starts in Felixstowe this week. That's this week, 25th of April. If you want to know more, it is on our church email. Or I'm sure there's some Youth Alpha people in here today, so please do ask them. That's going to be great. If your school year's 7 to 13, you'd be most welcome. Tonight is the regional New Wine Sunday evening celebration, which will be held at St. John's in Woodbridge. And that will be 6 o'clock for a 6.30 start. Mana pop-up shop tomorrow evening, 6 o'clock. And then we also have... Yeah, I just wanted to say as well, thank you to our flower group. Um, the ladies who prepare flowers every week, they're just beautiful. And this week you'll see a lot of them around again. So if you would ever like to be involved. I'm sure people like Heather. Can you stand up a little bit? Because Heather's in charge of her flowers. Can you just give her a clap for that? She's brilliant. <laughs> a great vision. And also, if you've got someone special that you want to remember one particular week, again, speak to Heather and they will prepare some lovely flowers. Now, I'm going to give an advance notice on this one. Later in our service, as I mentioned, our young people are going to be baptised. Once they've got out of the pond, they'll be a little wet, which means they have to get a big bit changed. And because of that, the toilets will be out of order for about five or ten minutes, okay? Because we've got about eight people getting changed. <laughs> so that's the advance notice, if you know where I'm heading with that one. Toilets out of order for five or ten minutes, okay? Birthdays. Here at Christ Church, we love to have celebrate with people who are having a birthday. And this week, the following people are going to have a birthday. So if your name is called out, would you please stand up? Noah P. Terry B. I believe Terry B. is in the office at the moment. Stand up anyway, Terry. Maureen B. Maureen's here. Come on, Maureen, up you get. Christos. Chris, Maureen, anybody else got a birthday this week? 
No? Oh, well. Right, let's, let's pray for our lovely folks here. Father, we give grateful thanks for our friends who are having birthdays this week. We ask for your goodness, your love, and your joy and presence to surround them on their special day and in the year ahead. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you are able, would you please stand for our sung worship?
He is indeed worthy. And as we take our time now to think of some of the things that haven't gone so well in the week, the month, the year, let us take time to confess before Almighty God. We say together, most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as yourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us, would you like to take a seat, please? We are going to pray with thanksgiving for the gifts and offerings that have been given throughout this week. Lord, we give grateful thanks for our many gifts, for tithes, offerings, for skills, for talent, and for time, which have been gifted to the church this week. Lord, we're very grateful and thankful. And we ask, Lord, that you'd enable us to use these gifts wisely and well for your kingdom purposes. In Jesus' name, amen. I feel a bit like the newscasters today. I've got so many pieces of paper here. But the most important thing are the young people in this building today who are going to be baptized later in our service. And with that, we're going to, I'm going to ask all four of you to come up beside me. We've moved a few chairs this time, so they're not going into the water yet. <laughs> you all good? Just to say as well, we have had three of the songs of these young people that they've chosen themselves. One, God's Not Dead, at the start. We've also had Waymaker, and we've had Praise. And there's another one coming up later. Our Lord Jesus Christ has told us that to enter the kingdom of heaven, we must be born again of water and the Spirit, and has given us baptism as a sign and seal of this new birth. Here we are washed by the Holy Spirit and made clean. Here we are clothed with Christ, dying to sin, that we may live his risen life. As children of God, we have a new dignity, and God calls us to fullness of life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, by the power of your Holy Spirit, you give to your faithful people new life in the water of baptism. Guide and strengthen us by the same Spirit that we who are born again may serve you in faith and love and grow into the full stature of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Jesus said, let the children come to me. Do not stop them. We thank God for Natty, for Josh, for Katie, and for Sersha who have come to be baptized and affirmed in the faith they have been baptized into today. Christ loves them and welcomes them into his church. So I ask all of you, you all, will you support them as they begin their journey of faith? Yeah. Will you help them to live and grow within God's family? Natty, Josh, Katie, 
Do you wish to be baptized? Sersha, have you been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit? Are you ready with your own mouth and from your own heart to affirm your faith in Jesus Christ? We're now going to have a time of testimony from our young people. Hi, my name is Natty. I'm 12 years old and I was born in a Christian family with two brothers. From an early age, I was taken to church and I have some knowledge knowing of what God is. But this has not determined me choosing to do the right thing, like being mean to my brothers or lying. I did things just because I wanted to be accepted. But my parents always tried pushing me closer to God. They even taught me how to pray. I know my parents are praying and will be praying for me to choose the right path. When I understand it that I was a sinner knowing I would not be able to spend my life without having God in it. So I started believing in Jesus and learning to accept him in my life. I want to live for Jesus and I want to honour him. My name is Josh. Even though I grew up in a Christian family and my parents took me to church since I was born, I chose the wrong path. I chose friends who influenced me very wrongly. And, I, and to be accepted, I chose to follow them and be like them. But recently, when I went to Sizeville, I understood how sinful I am and how much I need Jesus. So I choose to receive Jesus in my life by giving, him, by giving up sins and negative influence in my life and to learn from the Bible and to follow the path of God. And then I slowly started to think about baptism. So I ended up deciding that it's better if, if I'm closer to God. I pray that the Lord will hold me in his hand and give me the strength to walk with Jesus all my life. Katie would like me to read hers today. Isaiah 40 verse 11 says that he will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will carry the lamb in his arms, holding them close to his heart. Katie says, my dad used to read the story of the lost sheep to me every day before school because I wouldn't choose another one. At the time, I think it was just because I liked the sheep. But when I look at how far I have come and how deep my faith with God has gone in the past year, when I look at my good days and my bad days, I see Jesus standing in front of me with a cup of hot chocolate and a hand to hold, just like the shepherd looking after his sheep. Give her a big hug. My name is Sasha. I've always called myself a Christian. I was christened as a baby and have been taught all of these stories about a loving, powerful God. I could do Bible trivia and know a lot about God, but it was more in the way that I could know about a celebrity or a fictional character. It wasn't a personal relationship and church was the only real thing I had to remind me of him. Oh, I'm shaking so much. <laughs> the problem was over time, and especially during COVID, I drifted from God. During this time, I also didn't have the best friends, and something always felt missing. That was until Spring Harvest 2023 that truly put me on the path of Christ. And although I've drifted quite a few times since then, I always come back to God. So I prayed and asked God never to let me forget him, or that was, <laughs> and that was the best thing that I've ever done. <laughs> Sorry. Without this time, I felt so called to be baptized, and every single week I could feel God telling me that I have to do it. So finally, we spoke to Liz about it and made me, uh, and made it certain I would. So much has changed since then, and I've started seeing people as children of God, and my dislikes for people have started to fade away. I've also been thinking about the bridge in Hosanna, where it says, break my heart of what breaks yours. And when I started praying that, I felt so complete. It made a switch in my head that I was no longer trying not to sin, but instead I no longer wanted to. I am so glad to continue my journey with God and look forward to what my future holds.
Weren't they great? Let's pray for them. If you want to hold your hand out toward them, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for Natty, for Josh, Sersha, and Katie, who have come to be baptized and affirmed today. Christ loves them. Lord, I ask that you just welcome them into your church with your open arms and even the hot chocolate. <laughs> and we thank you. Amen. So will you support them in their journey of faith? Yeah. Thank you. Do you want to take a seat? Later on, we're going to have our reading and our talk. Um, but first of all, our youngest folks, our children, are now going to be leaving us to go to their groups for a time. So let us pray for them. Lord, I thank you for our children, our young people, who are an absolute joy to us. We are so blessed. Lord, they are our church of today, influencers of today and tomorrow. And I pray that you will bless them richly in everything they do. We pray for their leaders this morning and the helpers this morning, that they have a really wonderful morning. Amen. As our young people are leaving us, we are now going to have a reading followed by the word. Good morning. Uh, today's reading is from Acts chapter 2, verse 36 to 42. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words he warned them, and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted this message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. They devoted themselves to the apostles, teaching, and to the fellowship, and to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Thank you, sure. Thanks for that reading. Let's, uh, let's pray before we go on. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord. And through the written word and the spoken word, may we hear the living word, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. What shall we do? That was what the people asked the Apostle Peter when he'd finished preaching about Jesus on the day of Pentecost. Peter's reply is the, is the point the entire account in Acts 2 moves toward. Repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. His speech and stir to action conclusion fulfilled Jesus' prophecy in the last chapter of Luke. There, Jesus had promised, repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Now, repentance had been taught in his name. The Greek word for repentance is metanoia. It appears frequently in the New Testament as a way to describe conversion. Repentance is a central focus in Acts. 
It literally means a change of mind, a change of heart, a spiritual about face in one's life that will be shown by a change in what one does. And that change occurs in relationship to the true God. Repentance and faith are two aspects of the same change of orientation that occurs in converted people. As we're told in Acts 20, 21, through the words of Paul, one must turn to God in repentance and have faith in our Lord Jesus. And while we are commanded by God to repent, to have our sins forgiven and to have faith, humanly speaking, we are incapable of doing any of these things. These are all gifts of God that are bestowed on us through Jesus Christ, our Savior. And ultimately, faith and repentance and forgiveness are also gifts of God. And the need for baptism, Peter also speaks of an important act that it's associated with receiving and empowering uh, the, the empowering Holy Spirit. That was water baptism, which is an external token of belief in Jesus as Savior. Peter urges his audience to be baptized, and he promises them the gift of the Holy Spirit. Luke, the author of Acts, does not give us a clear-cut pattern of how and when the Spirit is given. However, baptism and receiving the Holy Spirit are associated together. And in the name of Jesus, believers should be baptized. In the name of Jesus Christ. The phrase in the name of Jesus is an expression of faith, as well as a commitment to Jesus in all that is this might entail. The desire to repent and commit along with willingness to make a public statement, uh, both through baptism, is associated with a person experiencing the gift of the Spirit. We should distinguish the gift of the Spirit from the gifts of the Spirit. Gifts of the Spirit are various spiritual abilities given to people in the church to be used for the common good. The gift of the Holy Spirit, however, is the Spirit himself, given to all who have faith in Jesus. This Spirit ministers all aspects of God's salvation to all believers, and by this gift, all are Spirit-baptized into one body, the church. And Peter's speech ends with the wonderful promise that his listeners would receive God's Spirit and become part of the people of God. And about 3,000 people accepted Peter's challenge to be baptized that Pentecost day. And from this single apostolic sermon on one day, more people became disciples of Jesus than during the entire time of Jesus' public ministry. And the promise of Jesus that his disciples would perform greater works than he had was true. And today, The adventure continues for Natty, Josh, Sergio, and Katie as they too are added to that number. And I'm going to spend a wee while now to help us think about how to further prepare for this faith adventure. First, another adventure. Uh, Can anyone name these characters dressed like astronauts? Buzz Lightyear, I got one there, right? How about the other fella? Not Neil Armstrong. Buzz Aldrin, that's it. The name of Toy Story's Buzz Lightyear was inspired by this Apollo 11 astronaut, a lucky escape, as they were going to call this character, Lunar Larry. Okay. I'm running out of splashdown things to do. I've done Apollo 13, so we're on to Apollo 11 this time. Uh, The American space flight nearly 55 years ago that first landed humans on the moon. Uh, Commander Neil Armstrong 
and Lunar Module Pilot Buzz Aldrin landed the Apollo Lunar Module Eagle on July the 20th, 1969. And Armstrong became the first person to step onto the moon's surface six hours and 39 minutes after they'd landed on July the 21st. Aldrin joined him 19 minutes later, and they spent about two and a quarter hours together exploring the site they had named Tranquility Base upon landing. And Armstrong and Aldrin collected uh, about 21 and a half kilograms of lunar material while they were down there to bring back to Earth. As Michael Collins uh, flew the command module Columbia in lunar orbit. Uh, and um, they were on the moon surface there for 21 hours and 36 minutes before lifting off to rejoin Columbia. When the lunar module landed on the moon, the two astronauts, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, were instructed to wait. So the two waited on the moon inside the lunar module, and in just a few short hours, they would open the door of their lunar lander and step into the unknown surface of a completely different world. And in the moments and hours of anticipation before the one small step and giant leap, Buzz Aldrin participated in an ancient Christian custom. He took communion. It was a simple but profound moment. The astronaut took out some communion bread and a small vial of wine provided by the Webster uh, Texas Presbyterian Church, part of his personal items that he was authorized to have. Aldrin got onto the comm system and spoke to the ground crew back on Earth. I would like to request a few moments of silence, he said. I would like to invite each person listening in wherever and whoever he may be, to contemplate for a moment the events of the past few hours and to give thanks in his own individual way. Aldrin silently read from John 15 verse 5, which he'd penned in a, a three by five inch note card. Said this, as Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, for you can do nothing without me. Then he reached for the wine and bread, the first food or drink ever poured or eaten on the moon. And he said, I poured the wine into the chalice our church had given me. In the one-sixth gravity of the moon, the wine curled slowly and gracefully up the side of the cup. At the time, I could think of no better way to acknowledge the Apollo 11 experience than by giving thanks to God. Think of it. With all the hands of influence to make the mission happy, uh, happen, all the technological advances, a significant holy moment occurred. The taking of the bread and wine to celebrate and commemorate with thanksgiving the momentous occasion. And as we consider the heavens, as we consider the creator of all the heavens, as we consider his glorious gift of salvation, let us all be grateful, thankful for who he is and for what he continues to do in our lives. And that brings us uh, to our text this morning. Acts 2 um, tells us about the dynamic launching of Christ's church. Um, about 3,000 people were baptized um, into Christ and began the adventure of a lifetime and became part of the church because the church is the people and not the building. Paul wrote to a fellowship in Colossae with these words, all over the world this gospel is bearing fruit and growing just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and understood God's grace in all its truth. That's from Colossians 1.6. The church was growing and thriving all over the world. The known world of the time, 
In fact, even their enemies declared, these men who have turned to the world upside down have come here also. The church grew, and as it grew, it bore fruit all over the place. It literally turned the church upside down. But how did it do that? How did the church not only survive, but thrive in such a challenging and at times hostile atmosphere? Well, the church was able to do what they did because from the very beginning, they were trained in the basics. It was these simple things that trained them that gave them their staying power. What did they do to train themselves to be a strong church? Acts 2.42. Uh, Two tells us they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship and to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Now, they did other things too, but these were the essentials. These were the four activities uh, that gave the early church their endurance and their faith. And now here's the thing. Church, the Christian life, can be an adventure. It can be exciting uh, to know God can use us to turn the world upside down. But we live in a world that's not excited or even hostile about that idea. When we find we're faced with this reality, we need to realize how critical these four things to us are as church. The apostles' teaching. Well, you, you might be thinking, what is that? you might be holding a bit of the apostles' teaching in your hand. It's called the Bible. This idea of the value of God's word in the church was so critical that Acts tells us the Bereans would have more noble character than the Thessalonians, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. God put great emphasis on the value of knowing the Scriptures. Why? Because the written words of Scripture are the place that you and I are going to, first of all, know God's will, learn about Jesus, and understand how we are to live our lives to please God. That's why churches put such a high priority on things like uh, Sunday school, uh, Bible study, preaching, and so on. So did you notice how often the Bereans studied the Bible every day? You can't get enough of God's Word into your heart and mind. We live in a tough world, and we need the assurance that the Bible can supply. Biblically, going to church is the act of going to be with other Christians, You can do that in a building or in somebody's house or in a park or even in the middle of a field. This building is not the church. We are the church. And anywhere we gather, that is where church is. When you and I go to church, we're going to be with other Christians and fellowship uh, is at the heart of what being a church is all about. And the word fellowship is derived from the Greek word koinonia. And koinonia can be defined as holding something in common. And is specifically used 20 times in the New Testament. It describes the unity of the spirit that comes from Christians' shared belief, convictions, and behaviors. And when these shared values are in place, genuine koinonia biblical fellowship occurs. And this fellowship produces our mutual cooperation in God's worship, in God's work, and God's will being done in the world. And if a church doesn't fellowship, it's not a church. It's just a bunch of people meeting in a building. Fellowship lies at the heart of what makes a church a church. And why is that? Because we live in a world that's often hostile to God and his kingdom. We need fellowship because we need each other. 
if you have a, a troubled marriage, church is the group of believers that can give you encouragement and advice. If you're out of work, church is the group that can help you find a job and get food and assist in many other ways. If you're in the hospital or you've lost a loved one, church is the group of people that come and sit with you and pray with you and cry with you. But the true fellowship is where the church, that's you and me, does stuff like this too. That said, I've got some bad news for you. The church won't always do that for you. It's not right, but it happens. And do you know why it happens? It happens because the church is made up of imperfect people. Look over here at me. I make mistakes all the time. I fail, I fall short. Just because we ought to step up and do the right things for each other doesn't mean we always do it. That's the bad news. But the good news is this, that you and I are the church. If nobody else does what they should do, you or I can do it. If we say to ourselves, it's going to happen, it may be up to me. You can create fellowship. You can step up and help and guide and listen to folk because that's what this adventure is all about. And if you're willing to accept this mission, then you need to have the attitude that says, I don't care if someone does it for me, but if I'm the only one doing it, I will be the church. Even if everyone else doesn't, I will step up and will be God's man or woman or person. Acts 20 verse 7 says, On the first day of the week, when we were gathered together to break bread, Paul talked with them. Why was the church gathered together? They'd gathered to break bread. They'd come together as a church to take of the Lord's Supper. We sometimes call this communion or the Eucharist. Paul just happened to be there and he taught as well. But the main reason they'd gotten together was for this table. Our communion table is way over there because we haven't got enough space today because other things are happening. But communion was central to their worship. The cup and bread allowed them and us to remember that Jesus died for each one of us. It reminded them as uh, we continue the journey, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And it's because he loved us, you and I, that we are here. It's because he loved us that he allowed his body to be broken and his blood to be shed. It's because he paid the ultimate price that we are allowed to be in his presence. That's what this table is all about. It's because of this meal that the early Christians and many today stand strong when faced with uh, persecution. And finally, the Apollo 11 crew had to constantly keep in contact with mission control. They could have decided, we don't need to bother mission control or close their ears to what mission control was telling them, thinking we can handle this, and also had all sorts of things go wrong. But if they had, they'd have died. For instance, as they were planning re-entry to Earth, the course had to be changed because of some dramatic changes in the weather at the originally planned landing area, which would have resulted in the destruction of the craft before it made it to splashdown. They couldn't handle it on their own. They needed help from outside of their little world to reach in and help them. That's what prayer is for us. It's a realization that as Christians, we need a power from outside to help. Now, the Apollo 11 crew made it home safe. And I'm delighted today for uh, Natty, Josh, Zesha, and Katie but it's a journey where we all need to be prepared to walk in faith, train for the adventure as we read the Bible, fellowship, celebrate communion, and pray. And baptism is a sign that we have a new hope 
a new family, a new life. And perhaps you today might feel that God might be calling you to transform your life. Maybe somebody's told you about Jesus and you want to know more or want to know what to do next. Perhaps you grew up in a Christian home, but now you want to express your own personal faith. And, and here we're just at the end of uh, coming to the last couple of weeks in one of our Alpha courses. And it's been amazing the transformation that some people have found in Jesus as they've explored uh, the questions of life. And if you want to talk or pray about this, see myself or Liz at the end of the service. Amen.
I think all our young people are back now from their groups or are certainly on their way. Natty, Josh, Katie, Sersha, it's time. <laughs> Do come up and join me. We all wander far from God and lose our way. Christ comes to find us and he welcomes us home. In baptism, we respond to his call. Therefore, I ask you, Natty, Josh, Sersha, and Katie, do you turn away from sin? Do you reject evil? Do you turn to Christ as Saviour? I'm going to pray over the water now. Loving Father, we thank you for your servant Moses who led your people through the waters of the Red Sea to freedom in the promised land. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who passed through the waters of death and opened for all the way of salvation. Send now your spirit that those who are washed in this water may die with Christ and rise with him to find true freedom as your children, alive in Christ forever. Amen. To you all, I read these words, and if you agree, you say, we do. Brothers and sisters, I ask you to profess together with these candidates the faith of the church. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried? He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? Natty, Josh, Sersha, and Katie, is this your faith? In a moment, we are going to baptize and reaffirm in water. So if you can hold on, that would be great. Can I ask that the sponsors um, would head in that direction? Thank you. There are young people and those who are helping me with baptism today, if you could come to this side. Natty, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. the cross. 
cross, may God, who has received you by baptism into his church, pour upon you the riches of his grace, that within the company of Christ's pilgrim people, you may daily be renewed by the anointing spirit and come to the inheritance of the saints in glory. Amen. 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 Josh, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God, who has received you by baptism into his church, pour upon you the riches of his grace, that within the company of Christ's pilgrim people, you may daily be renewed by his anointing spirit and come to the inheritance of the saints in glory. Amen. Katie, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, who has received you by baptism into his church, pour upon you the riches of his grace, that within the company of Christ's pilgrim people, you may daily be renewed by the anoint his anointing spirit, and come to the inheritance of the saints in glory. Amen. 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 Sersha, may God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God, who has received you by baptism, into his church pour upon you the riches of his grace, that within the company of Christ's pilgrim people, you may be daily renewed by his anointing spirit and come to the inheritance of the saints in glory. Amen.
That's so good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Didn't he do well? There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Natty, Josh, Sersha, and Katie, by one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. We say together, we welcome you into the fellowship of faith. We are children of the same Heavenly Father. We welcome you. Now let's cheer for them. This is the moment when the facilities are not available.
Morning to you all on this great new day. In Psalms 136, verse 1, it says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. And so we start by praying to our Heavenly Father, and we thank him for the new day and the many blessings that we have all had during this week. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now we want to thank you, Lord, for the four young people who were stepping in that water just now. We thank you and we ask you that their lives will be changed from the old to the new in you. We bless, ask you to bless Natty, Joshua, Sircha and Katie. And thank you that they've taken their vows to follow you in their lives. Fill them with your Holy Spirit. Let them feel your love, your guidance, and your peace all through their lives. Help them to listen to your word and your voice as they walk with you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh Lord, we turn our prayers to the unrest in the world. Oh Lord, bring your peace to the Middle East and to Ukraine and Russia and many more places. Oh Lord, let there be no more bloodshed and let the people be free to live again and rebuild their lives. Oh, Lord, we just plea and praise all those people that are in the midst. Just be with them all. In Jesus' name, we ask this. Amen. Lord, we pray for any that we know that are ill and need our heal, your healing touch. So in this moment of time, we'll just have a think of all those that need your healing touch now in this silence. Lord, we just ask you to heal them all. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now we pray for the Felixstowe Town pastors that they will be able to get some more people to join in this ministry and that they be able to please protect each one of them and guide them as they go out on the streets. And look after all those in Felixstowe that need your help. Be with them all. Strengthen them and encourage them as they go out each evening. Amen. We pray for Marcus as he starts his new parish in New Haven. We pray that he and his family settle quickly and they find new friends and soon feel well at home. And also we pray for Lilia and her family that in their new home in um, New York, help them to settle nicely and find new loving um, home, church homes. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh Lord, we pray for the Youth Alpha that is about to start soon that many youth will take up the challenge and that the leaders and the youth will learn and fellowship together. Oh, Lord, please help them, Lord, and uh, let them know your love and peace surrounding them as they meet together. Amen. 
And lastly, dear Father, we thank you that you have given us life. Help us to live a life of thankfulness, remembering that your love endures forever. Amen. May I ask that the young people and their sponsors could come up, please? Well, we all made it back. (laughs) In a moment, Peter's going to gift you a Bible from the church. He spoke earlier about the word being really important and it is really important in your journey. Immerse yourself in it, live by God's word and you'll have a great adventure, I can assure you of that. You will also receive a candle to remind you that you are now a light in the world that he's called you to. So if Peter can come up and we should This must be yours. Oh. Are you sure? I'll have to look inside now. Yeah, I thought it was. There you go. You do realise there'll be things over dinner about that. (laughs) I will laugh about it. Thank you. God has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and has given us a place with the saints in light. You have received the light of Christ. Walk in this light all the days of your life. We say together, shine as a light in the world to to the the glory glory of God God the the Father. Father. Amen. Amen. Give them a clap. Something that we've started to do recently, which is very important, is the people standing behind each of these young folks are their sponsors, and we've asked them if they will pray for them, for these lovely young people. So may I ask Kevin, would you start praying? Uh, My son's church up in Leicester, uh, at the baptisms, they uh, sing a song with a chorus, um, Hell has lost another one. I am free. Let's rejoice in that today. Because today, although there will be rejoicing in heaven, the devil's going to be saying, Natty's here, not another one. (laughs) Father God, we pray for this mighty warrior of God. Lord, we pray that you strengthen him. You give him the words and the courage to speak out for you. And Lord, as he goes about his days... Uh, may he shine a light everywhere he goes to the people that he speaks to, to the people that watch him, the people who hear him. Lord, be with him for the rest of his life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise be the Lord. It's the first time when I um, read my prayer, but uh, English is not my first language, so... It's important to me, to you, to understand what is in my heart, deeply in my heart. So, (laughs) 
No, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. So, Lord, we came before you in this morning to thank you. To thank you for your time, for your timing, for how you choose to do things on your own time. My heart is before you, and I have been thinking these days if Joshua's is age and time is suitable for your baptism. Now I know it is. I know because it's your time. Some, some time ago, at the birth of Joshua and his blessing ceremony, you also had mercy on me and my wife and chose for us to follow you on that day, and we thank you for that. It was the time you chose for us. That was the time you chose for us. Now you choose to speak to these young people, and they choose to follow you in the water of baptism. You choose the right time for each of us, for each person in this church as well. You, Lord, do all beautiful things in their time, what you say in your word. Lord, remember that time for each of us. Lord, and if there is anyone here to, who doesn't know you yet, please speak their hearts to him on her. Father, we thank you, and please make us and these young people who have chosen to follow you aware that is not about us anymore is but about you lord jesus i leave joshua and this young man and woman girl um, in your hand jesus amen english is not my first language either <laughs> It is a delight to be part of a church, the worldwide church, and we are called to sow the seeds of the gospel. And isn't it a great delight when you see those seeds sprout up and bloom and grow and bear fruit and continue to take that good news out again? It's been a privilege and a delight to walk with Saoirse over her life and to bless her now. Saoirse, may your life in this world be a happy one. May the sun be warm and may the skies be blue. May each storm that comes your way clear your air for a brighter day. May the saints and our Saviour watch over you and over all who have walked through the waters with you this day. Amen. Lord, I thank you for Katie. I pray that you would surround her with goodness and lead her in your light each day. Help her to walk in the path you have chosen and guide her steps along the way. Teach her, Lord, to trust in your wisdom and keep her from all harm and bless her with all your grace and love. May she grow in strength and wisdom and come to love you even more and put her trust in you. May you protect her and guide her and stand beside her through all the years and on this special day with your everlasting love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give them another hand.
In just a moment, um, this place will be transformed as we will share lunch together. And please do stay. If you've come for the, the first time or you've come to visit, please stay and have lunch with us. There's plenty to go around. The Lord will multiply and there's lots of it. So let us pray with a final blessing and prayer. God of our pilgrimage, you have led us to the living water. Refresh and sustain us as we go forward on our journey. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may God give to you and to all those you love his comfort and his peace, his light and his joy in this world and the next. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you, with you and remain with you always. Amen. Do find your way around. This will all change very soon. Can we have some of the gentlemen and ladies as well that want to help clear some chairs, please?